Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Nicoletta and I have finally figured out a plan on how to tackle all the series that I'm in the middle of. So I'm in the middle of a lot of series right now that I own and it's very overwhelming to like think about all of them at the same time. So I've decided to kind of like bunch them together to get through them easier. So I've selected 12 different series, one book from each series, and I'm going to focus on those for the next six months. Some of these books are going to be like finishing up series, so that's going to be totally complete. Some of them are ongoing, but the next book isn't out yet or I don't own it yet. And then we have the series that I'm nowhere near completing or that have at least two more books before it's complete or caught up. So I'm always going to have 12 series that I have on the go that I'm prioritizing over everything else. And then there's going to be books that I complete or that I'm caught up on that are going to like fall off the list either forever because they're complete or temporarily because I'm caught up and the next book doesn't come out for like, you know, a while and I don't own it. And then the books where there's multiple books in the series that I haven't read yet, those are going to stay on the list until I finish that series. So they're going to keep carrying over every six months. So for example, this pile has nine series that I'll either be complete or caught up on by the time I finish this pile. So if I finish this whole thing in like two or three months, I'll then add nine more series to it. But the six month is kind of like a deadline like no matter what you have to read them by this time and if I don't read them by that time I'm just going to unhaul them because there's no excuse to not read two books a month from this list so if I don't read it by six months that means I don't care about it anymore and I'm going to get rid of it that's going to drop off and I'm going to replace it with another series so let's get started with the series that I am so close to finishing I just have one book before completion. A lot of these are super popular books. I'm not going to go into detail about what they're about because I feel like that's redundant. Everyone kind of knows what they're about already. So I'm just going to kind of explain my journey with the series, I guess. So first, and I think the only contemporary series, is To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I'm on the third book, Always and Forever, Laura Jean. I have like a kind of love-hate relationship with the series. I really like it. Like it's it's like fluffy and I enjoy it, but I just like don't really like the main character all that much. I gave I think three stars to both of the like the first one and the second one and I also like just started the series so I'm really proud of myself for basically finishing it like immediately. I actually just noticed that I think I have a love-hate relationship with like a lot of these books so that's interesting. But the next one is Spoke of the Air trilogy so I'm on Queen of Nothing, so just the last book. This is another one where I have a love-hate relationship with it. Um, I enjoy it because I like kind of fae stories, but I think because it's so hyped, I my like expectations were super high, and I was expecting this to be like the best series ever. And it's it's good. I enjoy it. I'm on the third book. I haven't like abandoned the series, but it's not like the greatest thing I've ever read. But I like it well enough and I'm excited to finally finish it. Another love-hate relationship is with Southern Reach. I'm on the final book Acceptance by Jeff Vandermeer and I really really loved the first book Annihilation and then I didn't really like the second book all that much. In fact it was a borderline hatred of it. Um, this all takes place in kind of like a government sort of, not facility, but it's like an expedition. I think a lot of people really enjoy the first book and then a lot of them really don't like the second book because it has like a totally different feel to it. Um, it's, it's very like day in the life kind of thing in the second one, whereas the first one's like very exciting and interesting because we're learning about, you know, Area X for the first time and there's like like you're thrown into it. I'm excited to see what this one brings because I've heard that it kind of like brings everything together and kind of like comes full circle. So I'm hopeful that it's going to tip the scales to be a love for the whole series. Next we have the Shadow Glass which is part of the Bone Witch trilogy. 
I really really enjoyed the first book. One of the first books that I read when I was like rediscovering YA was The Bone Witch and I was like blown away by how cool it was and how um, expansive the world was and like the magic system and the writing was really beautiful and it was just like really really cool. So in the first book our main character is a bone witch and she accidentally resurrects her brother from the dead. It gripped me from the little like blurb on the front cover. It says something like, let me be clear, I didn't intend to raise my brother from the dead. And that just kind of like grabbed me. And the last book I have to complete a series is one that I've just been putting off because I don't want the series to end. And that's The Empire of Gold. I love this series. I am obsessed with it. It's just such a vibrant series and it's so detailed and it just like you can read it for hours and hours and not even notice the time passing and it just it just sucks you in so much and the only reason why I haven't read this yet is because when I picked it up I was super busy and I could really only read things or listen to things on audio while doing other things and I didn't really have time to like invest in this like 800 page book or whatever it is 700 pages so I just like put it off because I knew I wouldn't have like the right mind to like give it the attention that it deserves because it is a series that I love and I want to just be able to like sit down with it and not to like worry about anything else going on so now that life is kind of like calm down a little bit and I do have time to physically read an entire chunky book instead of like switching back and forth between like audio and whatever and I can't even find the audio it must be like an Amazon exclusive I don't really know but I can't find the audio so I need time to like you know sit down and just read it instead of like flipping back and forth between different formats I'm really excited to get those five books one because I'm excited for them but also because that means that I'm going to take five whole series off of my list soon and that's very exciting. So next I wanted to go through the series that are not complete but that don't have a book out right now. So the first book is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi and I have a really funny story about this because I heard so many things about the series and how amazing it is and how like just how incredible it is. So I really wanted to pick it up. And I saw both of these um, on sale at a, at a bookstore like, that was closing down, so it was like a super deep discount. So I just picked them both up because I thought, you know what, eventually I'm going to read both of them, so might as well get them now. So I get home, and very shortly after, I start reading this. And I get, like, pretty far into it. And then I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know why people love this series so much. It Like, there's no world building. It's super confusing. Um, I hate it. And I started reading reviews on it, and then I realized it's the second book in the series. So I'm just an idiot, and that's why I didn't understand anything, because there's an entire like 600 page book before it that explains everything. So that was my fault. Also unrelated, but I just love the naked cover of this whole series. And now we have another love-hate relationship with Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. The first book in the series I enjoyed, but I hate the main character. Like, I really, really hate her. I hate her attitude. I hate her personality. I hate her. But I still love the book. But there's just something about his writing that I don't need to enjoy all the characters in his books. He has a lot of, like, very hateful characters, but they're not necessarily, like, the main character. But she is, and I really didn't like her. She's just very like snarky and kind of like full of herself and I don't know it just it's it's unwarranted for like who she is. At the beginning of the first book she's like super cocky because in her bubble she is like the big fish in a small pond and then when she goes to her you know flight academy and is training with other fellow pilots in her in her peer group she realizes that she's like not a big fish, you know, um, a big fish in a big pond. She is on par or even less than a lot, like the skill level is less than 
a lot of her peers. She kind of got, you know, she kind of got put down a little bit in a couple of her classes because everyone else was, you know, the same as her or better. The first book is basically her trying to prove everyone wrong because her father was also a pilot and he was marked as a traitor. Um, so a lot of that is very interesting and kind of like the personality of this like snarky kind of uh, cocky thing going on kind of makes sense in that regard because she has like all these like walls up and I really enjoyed like the breaking of the walls. And I also enjoyed like the twist to it all and I want to see where it all goes because the ending of the first book was like really really intriguing and I'm very excited for that. I know that the third book comes out sometime this year but I don't think there's an actual publication date. Next we have Archive of the Forgotten by AJ Hackwith. This is part of the Hell's Library series. I love the first book. First of all some of my favorite books are set in Hell or like surrounding hell. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but I'm always really intrigued by those kinds of books. So when I heard about the first book in the series, I was just like instantly, yeah, like, yes, I need that. And I bought it like immediately. It's basically about a library in hell. It's in hell, but it's not like part of hell's jurisdiction, if that makes any sense. It just like happens to be in hell. And this library contains all the like unfinished books of everybody who has ever lived. So like all the books that are within a person and for whatever reason they just were never written. Be that like they didn't become a writer or they died or you know something, some life altering thing happened and they just never finished their book. So that's how it starts but there's a lot more to it. There's like a giant battle between like heaven and hell and you know lots are destroyed like the books are some that are, are destroyed and I am really really excited to continue on with the series because it left like it was very a satisfying ending but it left a lot of questions on how things are going to go moving forward so if you like books about hell if you like books about books then I would pick this up and the final book on my catching up list I guess is Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean M. McGuire. I think this may actually be my favorite series, the Wayward Children series, sorry, um, because if we're thinking about favorites there's kind of like books or series that you love but you've only read like once and I have a lot of those but then there's series where you like love to reread the books and this is my love to reread the books. I look forward to January every year, not because the new year, just because there's another book coming out in this series. But yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I can't believe I haven't read this yet. Usually I pick it up the same day and read it the same day, like in one sitting. I don't know what happened, but I didn't do it this time and I don't know why. And then the final three series that I want to focus on are a series that I have at least two books to finish before completing the series. So the first is Mistborn. I'm on book two, Well of Ascension. Again, one of the things that like I don't know why I haven't read this yet. I realized that I'm reading Sanderson totally out of order and I probably should have read this before jumping into Stormlight because that's like one of my favorite series and I will probably gain more insight having read this one first because you're supposed to. But here we are. Maybe I'll reread Stormlight before the next book comes out. There's um like three books in this part of the series and then there's other series that are also Mistborn but yeah I'm counting this one as like I'm kind of like Mistborn era one as one series and then era two is like a different series so I have two books before I complete Mistborn era one. And we have now come to the embarrassing section of this video. These are now books that not only do I have a lot of books before finishing the series I also started the first one over a decade ago so let's just get into those. I'll explain why I haven't finished them and why I want to finish them, why it's taken me like 10, 15, whatever years to get to them. So first this is a bind up but it has three books in it 
Um, first is the Thomas Covenant series. This is another series that has like chunks. What are those even called? I feel like there's a word for that where there's like three books like a trilogy and then like years and years go by and there's like another three books and they're like kind of connected. I don't know what that's called. This is the bind up of the first collection. Um, this is Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever by Stephen Donaldson. So the first book is Lord Fowl's Bane. I originally read the first of all I bought this bind up exactly 16 years ago. I started reading it 16 years ago and then even further let's go back even further to really explain why i've had this for so long this was one of my dad's favorite series and my entire life he talked about it he gave it to all of his friends all of his friends loved it one of his friends um had his wife read it to him while he was driving like an audiobook because there wasn't an audiobook for it um the first one came out in 1977 and he was obsessed with it and all of his friends were obsessed with it so i was like okay you know what i have to read this series because if you're making your wife read a book to you every time you get in the car it's gotta be good right he also told me that the first three books so this whole bind up is not written very well so he said if you can hold on through the first series the second one will be so rewarding so I was like, okay, fine. So our main character is from Earth, and then he goes to... What is that place called? That's gonna bother me now. It's literally called The Land. So anyway, he's he's from Earth, and he has leprosy, and then he ends up in The Land. So um, it has, like, for its time, really great commentary on on like how we treat people who have any kind of uh, illness or whatever or disability or whatever. He goes into like really really great details about leprosy and like the psychological impact of having it and how you're viewed as society. I really enjoyed that aspect of it but man the writing is brutal but it's something that I really want to read so I'm on book number two. And then to make matters even worse um, not only do I have this bind up, but I also have all three books in the second trilogy. So um, we're pretty far from finishing this series, but I need to make some progress on it. And then finally, the series that I have had the longest is the Shannara series, Chronicles, whatever it's called, by Terry Brooks. This one also has an interesting story. I also had a bind up of this, um, which I can't read because it is falling apart. That copy belonged to my great grandfather. I really enjoyed like the book, the physical book meant so much to me of this series because it was his and he had like written in it. So I read the first book and then I came across the entire trilogy in this edition which I think is like the TV show edition because it has like this sticker on it that you can't peel off. Um, so I picked it up because I was like, you know what, we're going to actually read the series without destroying your like sentimental book. It's another one of those books where like, I don't know if I would continue reading it if I didn't have like this sentimental connection with it. It's just very like formulaic and like kind of derivative of other fantasy from around this time and of course like Tolkien and stuff like that. So um, I don't like hate it, like it's not like a bad reading experience. It's just not a series that I'm like dying to get to and that's why it's been on my shelf for you know ever. <laughs> I'm really excited about my plan though. I think it's gonna be just like a really great way to get through all my series. It almost makes it kind of like a game. I love to gamify everything in my life so I think it's really going to help me progress in series and still feel like I have lots of wiggle room to read other books um, on my shelves, like book like standalones or library books or like whatever. So I think this is a really good system for me. I think I finally found something that's going to work and that I can stick to and that's the most important thing. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have a, like a system for your series, if you even think about it at all or you just like pick them up whenever. 
um, how many series you're reading in the middle of or whatever you own. And I will check back in at the most six months from now, but maybe even sooner depending on when I actually finish all these.